Good afternoon. It is Sunday, April 16th today, and uh, the year 2023. And um, yesterday, Chris launched my YouTube channel, and um, one of my videos, uh, listen, I have no idea how to uh, post post things on YouTube, um, TikTok. I don't know how to do any of that kind of stuff. Um, my beautiful sister-in-law, Angela, had said, oh yeah, that's good that you put it on TikTok. But I didn't put it on TikTok. I was actually talking about a tick. <laughs> the tick that bit my leg the other day. Um, so anyways, I, I am completely computer illiterate. And it really frustrates me, the whole computer stuff. Um, but I, I guess I posted some video. One of my walk and talks was um, a video about me at the jail. And I've had lots of people message me about this whole jail video because I guess it was a short a short and I don't know I don't know how I did a short um, but it, it, apparently it didn't post the whole video and lots of people were asking me what were you doing in jail um, at the jail what happened um, anyways for the last few years I've been going to the jail um, and I do prayer walks outside the jail and I now I only go maybe once a month. I'd like to increase that um, uh, and uh, pray outside again. And how it started was uh, my beautiful boy, who is now in heaven. Um, he ended up going into jail, and um, he went for a whole bunch of like minor minor things um, but it, it had accumulated so he had struggled with some addictions and it started out with marijuana and we did not compromise on allowing him to smoke marijuana in the house so we told him get out or get off that crap because that crap ain't allowed in this home not on the four corners of this property you can't bring any of that in this house and he was like you're not telling me what to do and fine I don't have to live here and so he chose to just kind of bounce from house to house of his buddies and then uh, stayed at Salvation Army and then he didn't have a place to live and just then he, he was hungry and he would go to a restaurant, he'd eat, and then he'd take off. And he did that several times. He took a taxi cab, and he um, he would take it from London to St. Thomas, and then he wouldn't pay. He'd run off. So a whole bunch of accumulated things like that and it caught up with him, and then he ended up doing uh, a stint in jail. And so I went to go visit him. That was awful. And... Uh, the first time that I went there, wow, it's quite an experience. Um, you have to uh, lock up your your keys, your um, your cell phone, um, your wallet, any of your identification, all that stuff. You don't have to bring anything in, so you have to put your stuff in a locker before you go in, and. Um, and then you go in and you wait and you hope that they'll come out to come see you. And so you sit outside of this um, enclosed glass area and you sit there and you wait. And so um, I'd sit on these stools and I'm waiting for him to come. Then he'd come through the glass, he saw it was me. And I pick up a phone, he picks up a phone and we're divided by glass. And he put his hand on the glass and you know we're holding hands and I'm praying and, and stuff over him and then I scheduled two visits a week 
and he only came out to see me maybe three times and that's okay because I was able to pray with him each time and um, then I would schedule two visits a week and um, he was in there for a few months and when he chose not to come out to see me so the guard the jail guard would come out and say oh he doesn't want to see any visitors and I was like okay so the very first time that he decided not to see me I was like well that's okay I'm gonna pray for you outside here you can't get away from your mama's prayers so I just started marching back and forth like seven eight times and then I always stuck with seven Seven is like a godly number, the number of perfection. So I would walk outside of that jail two times a week for months. It was there, oh, I want to say, oh, maybe six, seven months. And um, I just prayed. And then I didn't just pray for my boy. I prayed for every person in there. So I would narrow it down like this. I'd say, okay, okay, God. I'm gonna narrow down the prayers. You know what? Just bless every person that's in that jail that has breath in their lungs and that has a heartbeat, okay? We'll narrow it down to that. Touch them, heal them, heal their brokenness, guide and direct them, reveal yourself to them, pour so much love into them, Lord Jesus. Let them feel your presence. May the Holy Spirit flood and fill that atmosphere. I just carried on and on and on like that. And um, so I prayed for every single person that had anything to do with that place. 7-Eleven Exeter Road. I would say, um, Father God, I ask you to bless um, the people, not only that are behind bars, but the people that are working there, the people that are cooking in there, the people that um, are delivering mail there, the people that are cutting grass, the people that are doing maintenance, the people that are cleaning the toilets, and every person that steps foot onto this place, and every person that is related to any person that has been convicted and that is in this place, I ask you to bless them and reveal yourself to them, Father God. So I did that twice a week for almost like say seven months and then and then um when jesse came out immediately he wanted to go to church and that morning um that he he had called and said that he's coming out that morning um so i went to the jail at seven in the morning i was still in my pajamas i had no bra on i didn't brush my teeth wash my face nothing um i i just I was so excited that he was coming out that I just rolled out of bed and drove from St. Thomas to London and I waited in the parking lot and he didn't come out till it was about 10 15 and he said mom I'm so happy to see you blah 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 you know we reunited and kissed and, and hugged and everything and he said can we go to church I'm like ah Chaz look at me I can't go to church like this that's beautiful I'm so excited you want to go to church but we can go next week. We can watch it online right now. That's what we'll do. We'll watch it online together as a family. We'll go home and we can do that. I'll make you a beautiful breakfast. You know, let's get your room set up and all that kind of stuff, right? So that's what we did. And instantly, right away, he wanted to get baptized. I, I never, ever fed that to them. I did like this. I prayed about it. I prayed that God stirred up a hunger and a thirst to chase after the things of God and to chase after an intimate personal relationship with Jesus Christ and to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior on their own. And God did it. He done did it. So I was super excited about that. So yeah, he um, instantly, he wanted to go get baptized so um, I had him organize that with our pastor Al. I had him call and and talk to him, and he met with him, and I was just the driver. Um, so he did that all on his own, 
And you know, I have to tell you, although my boy is in heaven and he left this earth early, I cannot tell you the peace that I have in here and in here and in my soul. Knowing that my boy is with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He's with the Lord. There's just no greater place. I could not be more proud of my boy if he was the most brilliant scientific astronaut. No. My boy chose to be saved, and that's what is the utmost important thing to me, and I'm so grateful. So, anyways, the jail lock, that jail short clip, that I don't know how I did, Charlie, um, that short jail clip, that is what that is from, um, so I still go there. And only vote once a month right now. And uh, I pray for everybody that's in there. And I do it continually. So, for inquiry minds that wanted to know, that's what the jail clip was about. Alright, my friends. Go pray for somebody. Okay? We all need prayer. And prayer is our channel to the heavens. It activates the angels in heaven. To fulfill and do the will of God. So go pray. Okay? Love you guys. Bye.